Howdy everybody. I want to do an experiment in this video where I take grain orientation that's different among some handles and test them to see whether it makes a difference. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. You can see that the grain runs basically parallel to the handles. There's obviously curve there because the wood is came from a round tree, but you can see that we're mostly parallel. And then if we pan over here, even though it's hard to see, you can see that the grain is running perpendicular to the hammer handle. So as far as I understand and what's taught in books and common knowledge is that parallel grain, the grain that runs parallel to the handle is stronger. This is obvious in axes uh, because the plane of the handle is wiggly or not straight and so it goes in and out of the plane that the grain is in so unless the grain is running uh, parallel, you're not going to have much strength. That's obvious. Now, beams and such that hold up buildings, you always put the grain parallel uh, to where the force is coming from because it's said to be stronger and I believe that. Basically what I want to do with this test is see how much that matters. If it matters so much that it's worth, say, paying for uh, more wood and then having to waste more because we want this superior handle grain orientation. Uh, I know this is a real mouthful to try and understand and unpack, um, but what we're going to do is, as you saw, I have two sets of basically identical in cross section and length and dimension hammer handle blanks and but on this side we have the grain running this way, this way, and on this side we have the grain running this way. And I'm going to take one set of these. We're going to go over to the press here and I'll put the hammer handles under the little thing maduda and give it some pumps and we're going to see how many pumps and how much force it takes to break the handles in half. And then we're going to come over to the anvil and I forged us up a beautiful nice four and a half pound square circle rounding hammer right there. And we're gonna take each of the handles from the different grains, put it in there, and then we're gonna over strike on the far edge of the anvil like that, which is really cringy, really, really cringy for a blacksmith to do, but uh, that's what breaks hammer handles in the first place usually is accidents like that. And we're gonna see how many over strikes it takes and uh, whether you like it or not, you are just gonna have to rely on me trying to be as consistent as possible with the press and with my hammer swing. Um, again, and I, I wanna make this clear, the use that these hammer handles go through is not scientific. And so it doesn't really help us if we do a scientific test because the variability in the wood is so great that I can't account for that in the test. Um, that's just, there's, there's, I have a hypothesis that there's more variability in the wood than between these two grain orientations as a variable. So, I, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, because, and, and, and I won't have any, any bias in this test because the reason I want to come to a conclusion about this, or at least see this firsthand, is because I've been using grain orientation that's, doesn't really matter or grain orientation that goes both ways, I guess, for all of the hammer handles that I've ever sold and uh, on the hammers. And if that is far inferior, we gotta change that. We gotta, we gotta put good stuff on the hammers. So that's what we're gonna do. Sorry I don't have many intelligent words for this, but uh, I think you guys get it. Let's go over to the press. All right, you can see what's going on here. I got this hammer handle here, which has the parallel grain, and this hammer handle here, which has the perpendicular grain. And I'm just gonna put them in there, and then we're gonna slowly, slowly squeeze, and I want, I'll zoom up here so you can watch the handles break, because I, I, I'm thinking that there'll actually be a difference in the structure of the wood and how it opens up. And it'll be interesting and, um, we'll see how much flex they have too. I'll put the clips side by side. I won't move the camera so that we can 
um, we can see how much flex they have because that's important too. If they have different amounts of flex between the grain orientations. So there we go. It's right under there. Simple as that. I feel bad having to having to put poor hammer handles through this, but obviously this is for a good cause. This is the all right, I need to admit a major strong here. So I didn't realize until after I was editing this video that this test means nothing. As you can see, I'm putting force on the handles in the wrong orientation than the force that would be put on the handle when you're swinging a hammer. I'm putting the force in sideways when the force should be, you know, put with the handle turned upright, if that makes sense, on the, so that the, the, the rounded size sides would be resting on the press. I apologize, I, again, I completely messed up and I didn't realize it, and so this test proves not very much other than, of course, um, it, it, did, it does prove that the proper grain orientation for the particular force that's being applied is superior in this test. Uh, and so even though the press right now is pressing on the handle that's supposed to have inferior grain orientation, because the handle is in the wrong orientation, Therefore, it makes the grain in the right orientation, and so this handle performed better in the test. I hope that makes sense. The overstrike test actually shows what happens when force is applied in the correct orientation to, to, uh, between, between the two handles, um, and this one doesn't. So just keep that in mind, that even though the handle with the wrong orientation performed a little better, it doesn't actually have the wrong orientation in the test because of where the force was applied to. I hope that makes sense. Just keep that in mind. I'm very aware. This is such good handle material. It's amazing to see this. If you put any other wood in this test, you can just imagine what would happen. Okay, even still, we're, we still have structural integrity somewhat. It's really interesting. Look at, this is still, outrageously stiff. Oh my gosh, I can't even bend it. It's, it's really hard. It's, see, but you can see what the brake looks like. You can see it kind of just looks like fingers that are kind of opening up, so. Okay, so this is the perpendicular grain test. You can see that right there. Okay, unedited, uncut. This is the parallel grain test. So I'll do the same thing, I'll count the number of pumps and I'll try and tell you if one was harder to, uh, to break than the other one. And of course we'll compare these at the end and watch the angle and how much flex they have and all that good stuff. So we have contact right there. And we're gonna go, here's pump number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, on pump number six, I'm hearing noises. You can hear them too. Number seven, ooh. Number eight. Number nine. Number 10. Oh, 11. Okay, we, we have failure. It got soft on me. So you can see it basically sprung back almost almost straight um, different kind of opening it's not so uh, so fine you can see that the break on this one is quite a bit finer all the I don't know what you call that little things other and of course you don't have that here um, but we basically have failure at this point so I'll go back and put it in and we will just keep going and seeing what happens. And we'll go just as far as we did with the last one. We'll open that back up. Okay. So the brakes actually are very similar now that we went far with this one. It's interesting because there, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, difference in force. I didn't feel any difference in force, but then again, um, uh, who am I to tell? Uh, it wasn't a scientific test, so I have no idea, but 
wasn't wasn't anything significant. Uh, the brakes look really similar, and the angles that they came out at look really similar. So there we go. Okay, I've got the first handle fitted and installed in the four and a half pound hammer. You can see the fit that it has there. Shine down, shine down. Good tight fit on the bottom. Obviously there's no wedge in the top, uh, so there's gaps there, but you can see how the fit would be if there was a wedge. It would probably be nice and tight as well. So what I'm gonna do is put on that big thick glove so I don't injure the total inside of my hand and destroy it from all the shock and vibration. And I'm gonna overstrike like that and then I'll flip it around and I'll overstrike again and I'll just alternate and I'll count how many strikes and I'll practice a little bit first and just to try with, with another piece of wood uh, just to try and get my strikes really consistent and I'll videotape it and uh, once this one breaks then we'll put in the other hammer handle and do the same thing. Okay, so the handle that we got in here is the one with the grain orientation that runs this way. Okay, so this is uh, the inferior grain orientation. Test number one, or I guess it's test number two, sorry. Just like that, this is, you're not ever supposed to do this, but this is, this will be the, the practical test. Okay, test number one, strike number one. I hope I don't hit my knuckles on the other side of the handle because the darn thing is so wide. Here we go. Oh, that was harsh. Okay, there's number one, here's number two. Oh, we have failure there. Number three. Still holding up, number four. Number five. Oh my gosh, number six. Wow, we're starting to have major trauma there. I think we're at number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Ten. I would, I would call that failure. Yeah. Other than I have to get this tightly fitted handle back out, which will be a pain, but... And then we'll put the other one in, and we'll do the same test. And I won't move the camera either, so you can see everything from the same angle and compare it. This is the one with the more proper grain orientation that is going this way, parallel to the handle, parallel to the line of force. We're going to overstrike. We we have the same nice tight fit up of handle. Basi it basically looks the same, same cross section, same everything as the other handle. Um, or again, as I said, there will always be variability, and so you can't you can't go too far in a in a scientific style or in a in a test until it becomes too scientific, and then it's just there's no real point in doing it because it doesn't account for variability. You'll have to trust me though. The handle fits between the two handles, and therefore the thickness of everything is really similar. Really, really, really similar, as I can't detect any difference. So, thick glove, same thing, count the strikes. Here we go, number one. Oh, that was bad. Number two. Oh, number three. We have some serious breakage there. Keep going though. Number four. That one wasn't quite as hard. Number five. I would call that serious failure. Serious, serious failure. Yeah. Yeah. That's like I get I'll try and swing it again. I'm gonna straighten it out. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah, that's just not handy right there. <laughs> I feel like that's not usable. Well, uh, what have we learned? I, I don't know. Um, I'm kind of dumbfounded because I, I was not expecting these results because I think what happened was the grain orientation that's supposed to be inferior, which is this side over here, performed better than the grain orientation that's supposed to be right. So that's really interesting to me. 
Um, I have a feeling that there was some flaw in my test somehow. Again, I think it was variability between wood. Uh, if you pick up the handles and hold them, they feel like they're the same weight, so I, do, I, I don't have any doubt that the density of the wood is about the same. Um, but again, I, th there's no way to tell. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think as I said in the beginning, the variability between the wood is the main variable that one would want to be concerned about uh, when putting a hammer handle in. And that's something that we can't really control. Uh, we just have to be careful about the wood that we select, make sure that it's heavy and dense. Um, but it seems like it seems like in this particular example with a hammer handle of this shape and in these tests, one of which being kind of superficial, which is the, the press test, and the other one being practical, which is the overstrike test, it, it seems that they are, if not comparable, it went the other way, which shouldn't have happened. I, I don't know why that would have been. Um, I guess the point of this test, it showed it though, and, and there's no... Yeah, really, really interesting. Really, really interesting. So that's about it, and I'll leave it with you.